This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Handheld gaming has never been where it is right now. Coming off of the release of Tears of the Kingdom, the Switch is still going strong. The Great on the Deck library and its community continues to grow, and the Windows 11 handheld market is absolutely exploding. It feels like the iNeo 2 6800U just hit the market, but it's already getting ready to be overshadowed by the iNeo 2S 7840U. And then there's devices like the GPD Win, the One X Player, and most recently, the Asus Rogue Galley, which I'm hoping to get my hands on very soon. But with all of the attention getting paid to handheld gaming right now, as a majority, what is the biggest complaint when it comes to gaming while you're on the go? Battery life. And honestly, as we move into the 7000U era and beyond, it's only going to get worse. So, right now is as good as time as any to address the elephant in the room with some very viable solutions. <laughs> Today I have with me four of the most popular, modern, high capacity power banks. The Storm 2 Slim, the original Storm 2, the Basis 100 Watt Bank, and the Anchor 737. Each of these power banks are more than capable of charging a PC handheld during sustained gameplay. Of course, you can always lower TDP and put up with less than ideal performance. But where is the fun in that? Why buy a high powered handheld just to starve it of the power that it needs to perform? This is why I think it's time to start thinking of many PCs and lithium high capacity power banks in the same sense, because we're honestly getting to a point where these go hand in hand. PC handhelds are an investment, so why not start looking at quality supported power banks in the same light? Aside from performance advantages these power banks have over legacy versions, you'll notice that they all feature digital displays. So at a glance, you can quickly monitor information like volts, amps, and charging time. However, the two Shark Geek power banks take it to an entirely different level. At first, these two Storm 2 displays can feel like information overload, but once you familiarize yourself with the layout, you can better appreciate it. Each port on each power bank has its own color indicator in the top left hand corner when it's in use. Just below that, you can monitor the wattage, the volts, and the current going in and going out. Battery percentage is on the top right, and below that you can check the battery voltage, the battery current, the battery temperature, and the circuit board temperature, and finally the running time. Now the basis and the Anchor 737 on the other hand have digital screens as well, but they're a bit more bare bones. However, these banks have an estimated time until recharge, which is something I was surprised to discover is not available for the Storm 2 versions. Now you can track how long it takes to charge the Storm power banks by resetting the timer to zero, but it doesn't look like there's an automated feature that resets the clock between charges, so you'll have to manually do it. The Anchor 737 has an approximate weight of 1 pound and 6 ounces, while the original Storm 2 is about 1 pound and 4.8 ounces. The Storm 2 Slim is just shy of 1 pound and Basis comes in at 1 pound and 2 ounces. Surprisingly, even though the Storm 2 has the largest milliampere at 25,600, it's actually lighter than the Anchor 737, which has a milliampere of 24,000. But the Storm 2 Slim is definitely the most impressive when it comes to size versus output coming in at less than one pound at 20,000 milliampers and the ability to output 130 watts. And a bonus is that the slim profile works perfectly with something like the Steam Deck JSOX modular case. And the colored IPS display fires right up for quick reference. However, it only features two ports, while all other power banks have three ports at minimal. I'll leave the specs here momentarily for you to take in, and you can see that the Storm 2 even features a DC port. The DC port will work great for dated electronics that aren't PD compliant because you can actually adjust the DC volts administered inside the settings. Long pressing the face button brings up the settings menu and from there you have the DC settings and then you have the battery info, temperature units, Celsius or Fahrenheit, display settings and finally the power off button. So when it comes to testing how these power banks perform, I wanted to approach things from a very practical and realistic standpoint. So I came up with three drills to better help answer three very important questions. Number one, how does each power bank perform during constant gameplay for demanding games at moderate to high TDP? And number two, how fast can each power bank charge a PC handheld with a 50 watt hour battery like the iNeo 2? And lastly, once the power bank is exhausted, how fast can it be recharged for reuse? But before we dive in, a quick word from our sponsor. Upon creating your website for Squarespace, you're going to be surprised to learn just how simple it is to embed recommended products and Amazon affiliate links for consumer consideration and transactions. From the Squarespace homepage, you'll simply click into Commerce where you'll see a products ad tab. 
Click the plus sign and select Physical for tangible products. Here you'll be able to upload product images, a brief description, MSRP details, promotional discounts, etc. And by clicking the Additional Info tab, you can then embed your affiliate links as shown. Head over to Squarespace today to discover how simple it truly is to build a website or domain from the ground up. Kicking off with gameplay, I let the Steam Deck battery drop to about 15%, and then I fired up Cyberpunk 2077 and medium settings and moved TDP to 12 watts. For the Storm 2 Slim, you can see projected charge time was a little over 2 hours. The power bank is delivering just shy of 40 watts, and I reset the clock timer to zero so we can track the progress. Fast forward one hour and 27 minutes later, and the power bank was completely exhausted, leaving us with 66% battery life for the Steam Deck with a projected play time of 49 minutes remaining. So adding everything up, that comes to a total of roughly two hours and 16 minutes of continuous gameplay running Cyberpunk at a TDP of 12 watts, medium settings. Switching gears to the Storm 2 original, keeping things consistent, the deck charged at a little over 40 watts. Fast forward two hours and five minutes later, and the bank is fully exhausted. We're left with one hour and 43 minutes of gameplay remaining, coming to a total of three hours and 48 minutes of sustained gameplay, again at a TDP of 12 watts. The base's power bank charged the deck at 15 volts and 2.7 amps, which equates to roughly 40.5 watts. One hour and 36 minutes later, the battery was fully exhausted bringing the deck battery percentage to 68% and a remaining gameplay estimate of 51 minutes for a total of 2 hours and 27 minutes. And finally, the Anchor 737 charged the deck at about 39 watts. 1 hour and 57 minutes later, the deck battery was at 81% with 1 hour and 33 minutes remaining for an overall total of 3 hours and 30 minutes. So in order from best to worst, it was the Storm Geek 2 Original, the Anchor 737, the bases, and finally the Storm 2 Slim. Insert the Aya Neo 2 6800U for the next drill, which again has a 50 watt hour internal battery versus 40 for the deck. I let the Aya Neo 2 battery drop to roughly 15% because it's good practice not to completely drain it. I set the TDP to 15, plugged in each power bank respectively, and then I put the device to sleep. The Storm 2 Slim brought the Aya Neo 2 to 99 to 100% in about one hour and 15 minutes. The Storm 2 Original, 1 hour and 18 minutes, Bases, 1 hour and 20 minutes, and the Anchor 737, 1 hour and 10 minutes. And lastly, the Power Bank Recharge. Each of these power banks has an input watt limit, so I used a range between a 65 watt charger and a 140 watt charger from Ugreen that also has a 100 watt port. From 20% to 100%, the Storm 2 Slim recharged in 1 hour. The Storm 2 Original charged in 1 hour and 7 minutes, Bases 47 minutes and the anchor 46 minutes. So to summarize, as I said at the top of the video, I highly recommend that you pick up a quality supported power bank such as these to supplement your handheld PC, whether it be a Steam Deck or 6800U, and especially if you're looking at the 7000 series or the Z1, as with the Asus Rogue Alley. These are some of the most highly recommended power banks and they'll get the job done depending on your budget and your power expectations. Personally, I lean towards the Storm 2 Original as my primary daily driver when weight isn't an issue, largely because of the 93.5 watt hour battery. Now the Anchor 37 charges a little faster, but for continuous gameplay during charging, in my experience, the Storm 2 has provided me with the longest battery life overall. If weight and dimensions is of great concern for you, or if you're determined to strap your power bank directly to your handheld, then the Storm 2 is one of the best on the market right now for its small footprint. My only gripe for the Shark Geek banks in general, as I mentioned earlier, is that that beautiful colored IPS display does not provide an automated estimation recharge time. I also really like the slim build of the basis bank, making it very manageable to slide down inside a book bag. But it was the slowest of the four when it came to charging big battery devices like the iNeo 2. I also really like how fast the 737 charges and the fact that the company actually discloses the estimated total battery life cycles, which is 300. Something that I wasn't able to verify at the time of this video for the others. My biggest gripe for the Anchor though is that it is the heaviest and the bulkiest of the bunch. Each power bank supports pass-through charging as well, with the exception of the bases, so you can charge the bank with the power brick while the bank charges another device with no problem. Hope you guys found this video helpful, and if you have any specific follow-ups, make sure to hit the comment box below. As always, thanks for watching and supporting the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.